Hi everyone, very happy to see you um, back uh, after we had two, I think, master classes in German, mostly focused on recruiting. We're back inviting external experts to speak on a topic of their behalf. I think um, most of you have been to one of our master classes, uh, to those of you that haven't. Again, it's a format that's very informal, uh, where we invite external speakers that we like, that we've been introduced to, or that we get referred to. Um, that usually have one topic that they are known for, that they feel extremely passionate about. Today, we have Thibaut um, to speak on video prospecting, which is a topic that's fairly hot in prospecting um, and in the greater history of, I think, sales techniques is relatively new. Um, with that, Thibaut, over to you. Um, I will leave it to you. Uh, to introduce yourself other mm -hmm. that then you are an esteemed sales professional and uh, it's worked very internationally in in tech sales for i think over 10 years now or 15 years um, you have been a sales coach work, working with individuals and organizations but please go ahead and quickly introduce yourself uh, to all of us and then i will hand it over to you to the rest mm -hmm. we will now today rare exception and five minutes early at five two and use the chat function okay any questions that you have along the way whenever they pop into your mind share them i will moderate and ask them Thibaut, throughout the session Thibaut, with that over to you and a big warm welcome thank you very much for having me so you can go and follow me directly here on linkedin uh, my name is Thibaut suiris and i'm the ceo and founder of sales labs which is a a company i run by myself where i train and coach tech sales people to start more conversations and basically to close bigger deals faster. So today we're going to talk mostly about video prospecting. Um, so I won't go into much details about my life or whatever because I want to be I want it to be tactical. Um, so here's what you learn today. First thing is what is video prospecting because it's like huge used like and thrown in all kind of like conversations. But what is it actually? What are the important points about it? Things you have to know. How to shoot prospecting videos, the two types of prospecting videos that I recommend doing, and what's the setup you need to have. And finally, the last point that I love, how to get rid of your fear of video prospecting, because it's something that a lot of people are really scared of using. They try it a bit and it doesn't work. So what are the uh, kind of tactical things you can do right now to avoid having this fear? Or, you know, just like learning about this fear. About me, I told you already quite a lot about me. Uh, if you want, you can scan this QR code here or just go in the link I shared in the chat. But um, yeah, let's let's dive in. And, you know, I like it to have it very informal. So if you have questions, feel free to interrupt me, put it in the chat or just like raise your hand. I'll be happy to answer in here. So... My first question actually I have for you is, have you used video prospecting? Tell me in the chat if you've been using it. Yes or no? Yes, no, okay, no, not yet. None as of yet. Okay, so no one has been using it. Very interesting. Uh, why? So I'll take someone in the uh, in the crowd, and you're gonna tell me why you're not gonna you, you didn't use it. So do we have a volunteer? For what? <laughs> yeah, tell me. So you, have you used video prospecting? Yes or no? No, I didn't. Um, okay. Yeah, What's I actually that? really like videos and editing and all that stuff. Uh, but I, I don't know. I, I don't know what to <clears throat> what to focus on when doing it and how to do it correctly. Okay. Um, yeah, I never thought about using it actually. So I'm very curious what you're telling us today. Okay. You said you like editing or you don't like editing? I do like it. Yeah, I'm a hobby videographer, you could say. Like yeah. in my free time, I like to do it. And I also cut some videos for courses, uh, yeah. which we which we have on our platform but uh, not so far for video prospecting. Okay, okay. Good news and bad news for you. I mean, bad news for you is that uh, video prospecting doesn't require any editing, cutting or whatever. Uh, good news, which is good news for a lot of people because that's the main, one of the main reasons understanding about video is that we have to produce high quality content and high quality assets. 
which is far, like couldn't be farther from the truth. So um, so that's uh, that's interesting interesting for that. So let's let's dive in actually right now about what is video prospecting. So pretty simply, video prospecting is including uh, video in your prospecting sequences with the goal of booking a meeting. Um, it's insanely important because it helps you stand out when reaching out to prospects. You see, I've asked everyone if they have used video prospecting and except uh, Dominic, no one has. So out of the 12 people who are here, meaning Dominic and I have used that. So that's 12, uh, that's like, I don't know. Uh, I don't, I'm really bad at like these kind of things. 20, 20%. 60, 15%. So that's very interesting to see that only 15% of us are using video prospecting, even though it's our job to book meetings every day. So it's already a proof that it helps us stand out in there. Someone raised his hand. What, what was your question? Yeah, yeah. actually, I did, I did it also. I wasn't sure what video prospecting is actually, so, but I, I, I had done some like very individual videos, short videos um, okay. to, to, to book a meeting. So if, it, if it's what you mean. Tell us a bit more then. What have you done? What have you said? It was just like a one or two, um, two minute video, um, a short demo version. Uh -huh. uh, if the one, if if I couldn't book it in advance with the with the prospect, so it's it's um, yeah. And then I just really um, yeah focus on one argument, yeah, which I could get out of a of a call, um, yeah. Okay. Through. So there was something before having like conversation and contact with the prospect or after? So it was basically um, after the first contact, but before a demo. So yeah. like in between when it's difficult to really schedule a demo. Okay. Okay. I see. Okay. Interesting. Okay. We're going to talk a bit about that and, and, uh, and this thing of uh, recording one to two minutes videos to do a demo. That's, a, that's a, also an interesting point there. So talking about what is video prospecting. Yeah. Come on here. Yeah, this is happening. Yeah. Never works when you want these things. Give me a second. We, we can see your mouse move. Huh? No, no, I see, but I don't know what wasn't working. Yeah, now it can. Let's go back, share screen. Good. You can see my screen? Yep. Cool. Important points about video. I'd like to introduce you to two types of prospecting videos. You have the core video and the prospecting video in itself. So uh, Louis Paul, you shared like uh, something where you kind of send a demo or something like that, which is closer to a core video. The thing is a core video is something that you can reuse. Uh, it's a one video that actually you can send to more than one prospect where it's not personalized. And the prospecting video is a personalized video that you will send to each prospect. And so it's very important to have the differentiation between these two. Because the core video is typically what we send when you think about video prospecting. So when you think about video prospecting, you're like, okay, I'm going to do a demo and I'm going to show my product and show the features of the product and everything. So people will be convinced of taking a call with me because it's amazing. And that's the huge problem in here because the idea of prospecting is to start a conversation. And once you have the conversation is to actually navigate it to book a meeting if there's a need. And a really good way to do that is to create value. And a really good way to create value is to actually shoot a core video. So core video, what is it? It's a reasonable video that you can send more to more than one prospect between 45 seconds and 90 seconds. And it should include call to actions at the end of the video. So meaning that there's gonna be options that we can have at the end of the video. The thing with the core video, the goal you have in here is to create an asset that you can share so uh, basically, when you're prospect, you can tease people with this asset. I'll give you an example. I sell to a lot of VPs of sales and CROs. And VPs of sales in SaaS companies that have, I don't know, like raised a bunch of 100 millions, they, the big problem they have is typically that they're going to have to forecast. And if they cannot forecast properly, meaning if they say, OK, I'm going to commit to 50 million this quarter, and they say, OK, we're going to do 50 million. And at the end of the quarter, they do 70 million or, I don't know, 20 million. They basically become people who are unreliable to the CRO and the board members because they say, okay, this VP of sales is not able to predict how much money we're going to make. Therefore, this person is actually building too much risk. So it's creating too much risk for me. And basically, I cannot work with this person. So the biggest problem of VPs of sales is forecasting inaccuracy. And what I can do with this problem is actually create a video where I give three tips on how to have a better forecasting typically. And if I'm a VP of sales and I have issues with forecasting accuracy, if you tell me, hey, do you have issues with that? I have a resource for you. 
people will be interested in seeing that because it potentially can solve the problem. And that's really the idea of the core video is to nail down the problem. That's why you go in step one to list the problem of your ideal customer profile. So what are the problems these people are having in really concrete terms? And then you can list resources to solve these problems. The good thing with the resources is that if you have a company that has just a bit of a marketing going on, you can actually use the marketing content for that. Another example I have, what I do very often is I will have, uh, I have a sequence called my ultimate LinkedIn outreach sequence, which is a six step cold outreach sequence on LinkedIn. And uh, it's a great resource. And what I do is I use it as a teaser. So I do like a quick uh, or like a core video uh, where I do 45 seconds and it's an eight, 11, no, sorry, it's actually 11 page PDF. And so instead of going through, like having the reader go through the 11 pages, I say, okay, so this is a resource. This is where you can download it. Page one, two, and three are just like a fluff and overview. This is where you're actually going to get like real values on page four or five. And basically I curate this. I write down the summary of the resource. That's my step three. And the step four is where I list my call to actions. So at the end of the video, I'll have different options where you can say, I want to access the resource. So that people click and have a access the link to the resource they can download. And then maybe it can be, okay, I want to book a call with Thibaut because I'm interested in learning a bit more. And your step five is to shoot the video. I'll show you an example right after. Let me just check what's in chat. Eustus, will we get a summary of the most important points, the slide deck, the recording of this session, or should we take notes? Dominique, what do you think? Absolutely, from our side, if you're happy sharing, Thibaut, we yeah, share sure. anything that you share. I'll share the slides if you need to. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. So let me just find you uh, in the resource guide, uh, an example of a core video. Mm, yeah, here we go. Good. So this is what we have here. It's an example of how you actually, sorry. Uh, okay. How you build core videos. So here I have, we'll take the first problem, which is an example here, the one I told you about. Um, big problem we have here is a lot of sales reps are turning off prospects with pushy call outreach on LinkedIn. Very common, people doing connect and pitch where you connect with someone and you immediately pitch your product. Everyone hates that, but everyone keeps doing it. A good resource to avoid that is my ultimate LinkedIn outreach sequence, which is my kind of marketing material I like to use, something you can download. And basically, instead of saying in my call outreach, hey, I got this resource for you, I actually are re giving the resource. I'll basically summarize what are the key points in there. So three points, you have to optimize the connection request for acceptance and not to book a meeting or get a reply, but to get it accepted. You have to use multiple channels and you have to use creative touch points like video or voice notes. And these are basically the three key points to take out from this resource. What I do at the end of it, I have a, sorry, a sequence, you know, like the link to the sequence that is the resource here and the link to my calendar link. So let me just find uh, this resource here. Uh, yeah, we got it here. I use, by the way, a tool called Tolstoy. That is, I'm going to share with you after. So this is a core video. Hey there, thanks for your interest in my resource on how to make sure your sales reps are not turning off prospects with pushy cold outreach on LinkedIn. So there are three main things that are important in this resource. It's to first understand that your connection requests have to be optimized for acceptance and not to book a meeting right away. You have to use multiple uh, type of media and channel, and you have to also use a creative outreach, meaning video prospecting, LinkedIn voice notes, and that's how you can typically get a 38% reply rate and an 11% meeting rate with a sequence like that. So you can go ahead and download this sequence right, right away. There's a call to action for that. Uh, or you can simply book a meeting with me in my calendar if you have more questions and want to explore how I can help. And you see here, call to action, I can go get the sequence. That's the sequence in details. Or I can go and book a call directly on Calendly. So that's an example of how you can create, um, you can create like a core video. Let me just share this link, uh, Tolstoy, which is like a free pros uh, prospecting video tool. So we can have it. Do you have any question on that? Yeah, from, from my side, um, Thibault, so that's a core video. Yeah. 
how do you embed that in a message to because I, I imagine you typically use that on LinkedIn, right? LinkedIn email any channel that is asynchronous. Okay. And how do you embed that? Because I'm sure some have the question. Um, how do you embed that into a message? Uh, not not at all. Do you not comment? Let's say LinkedIn. Let's assume LinkedIn, you've just connected with someone. You assume it's the persona that has the problem that his or her sales reps are turning off prospects with pushy messages. So you have your right ICP, your right persona. Now, what do you do? You just copy paste the video, then it happens, or do you accompany that with a message? So basically the core video, I always start by this one, but that's the second one you're going to send. So the idea is this core video, you don't send it before you get someone to reply that they're interested in seeing it. So we are building it because it's a resource we can go and pitch. What we see often is that we say, hey, this is my product. These are the features and the benefits and everything. This is why you should actually book a time with me to talk. What you want to do is instead build this core video. So you can say, these are the typical problems people like I'm trying to reach out to have. And what you're going to do, and we're going to talk right after about that, in your prospecting video, you're going to write a message to say, hey, notice you did this on LinkedIn or you did, you know, notice you had this, some funding or whatever. Do you have this problem? Because if you do have this problem, I have a quick resource for you. Are you interested in seeing it? So that's how you do it. And that's basically what we're going to talk about right now. Okay, perfect. Okay. Yep. So that's the prospecting video. And basically, the underlying thing here is the Netflix effect. Anyone has been watching some Netflix series, binge watching series recently? Who's been uh, watching what series recently? Uh, Stranger Things. Yeah, a good example, Stranger Things. So the thing is, Netflix is very good and pretty much like movies are pretty good, the series are pretty good at uh, making you binge watch because what they do at the end of a show, they do like a cliffhanger. So they create tension and basically instead of resolving the tension at the end of the movie, they cut immediately and then you're like, what's going to happen? I need to see. So I love watching with my wife stuff like uh, Bling Empire, Selling Sunset and all this trashy TV reality. And over there, there's so many of these where you're like binge watching because of this cliffhanger. That's the same thing you want to create when you're prospecting. You want to create this kind of cliffhanger where you show people that you understand their problem and you say, you have this problem. If you do, I have something for you, but I'm not going to share it until you reply. So that's really the idea of your prospecting video. And so it's a personalized video that you'll send to each prospects, maximum of 30 seconds, and it should include different ways to reply to the video. So the idea of prospecting, uh, shooting a prospecting video is first building your script, preparing your setup, shooting your video, prepared for sending and sending the video. So that's how it's done. So you review your script. Um, so let me just check if, if we have some script here. Uh, we don't have it. So I'm going to show you a typical script that I like using. Uh, you review your script, practice reading your script until it sounds natural, and then you're actually going to shoot that. So here we have a script. Here we go. Good. So there's a simple framework you can use which is called trigger question, teaser call to action. So a trigger is a public piece of information that indicates someone, a prospect may have a problem you can solve. So it can be someone liking a post, commenting on a post, can be someone attending an event. There's so many types of triggers, but basically the trigger is what's gonna add some relevance to your call outreach. So for me here, it's gonna be, John, notice you are also planning to attend Mary's event on hybrid team setups. So here, for example, I actually, if I'm selling a solution like Hopin, for example, which is like a hybrid event, virtual event, webinar stuff, uh, I'm looking for people who I can sell that to. And if there's an event that is organized about hybrid events, you know, people signing up can be interesting for me to reach out because the fact that they are attendees to this specific event indicates that they may actually be in, in business or, or shopping to actually get uh, some event resources. So that's why I'm using the trigger. Then I'm using a question where I, I focus on a spe specific problem. I say here, what are you doing to avoid boring participants to death with worn out webinar slides, which is a very common problem when you are doing webinars. And the teaser here would be, would it be a bad idea to share a three-part framework to run engaging a webinar with hybrid crowds? And I finish with a call to action, let me know and I'll send it over. And basically with this very simple framework, you're saying, this is why I'm reaching out to you with the trigger asking a question to show that you understand a specific problem and then tease a resource to solve this problem and finish with the call to action. And you see here, I'm not trying to book a meeting and say, hey, click on my calendar link or whatever. 
I'm actually trying to get a conversation started. That's really the nature of your prospecting videos. You should just use them as a media to start conversations with your prospects, like you would do with like uh, voice notes or uh, messages that you're saying now or sending or emails. So that's really an example in there. Any questions on this uh, framework? All clear. Right. Okay, good. So let me just close that. So as I said, the checklist is like that. So if you write down this framework, what you see is when you start reading it, it's not natural. It doesn't sound natural. So you really have to read your script, prepare your script, read it very often until it sounds natural. And once it's done, you have to check a few things. So first, do you have good lighting? So what's really important with prospecting or with video is mostly having a decent lighting. That's what's going to change most of the quality of the video. It's not having a great camera or whatever. It's just do you have a good lighting. And typically, you need to have some lighting that comes from the back. Now, not, not behind you, but come from like the back of your computer. And maybe a side lighting on the right or the left. That's a really good way to actually get some good video. Make sure you use actually your webcam and your microphone. If you can do a Zoom call, you actually can prospect, no problem with video. And check that the microphone and the webcam are working. Uh, then part three, shoot the video. Do one last dry run. So make sure that you are actually comfortable and everything. Shoot your video and basically repeat the step number two, or this, the basically shooting until you're satisfied. One tip I give is when you're doing like video prospecting or you know, you're just shooting a prospecting video, don't even rewatch the video. It's not that important. And then you prepare for sending. So you make sure the audio, we can hear the audio, that you can see the video properly. Rename the video. So I like to rename the video. Uh, first name, check this out. And make sure that the preview is a moving GIF, basically. So that's going to help uh, your prospect see that you are actually a human behind that. And then you can send the video to a prospect. So you can tease that in an email or a LinkedIn by saying, hey, made this for you. And then you paste the link and you send the video. So I'm going to show you how I do it myself <coughs> every morning. You can look at that. So I use this tool again called Tolstoy. So for example, if I go on LinkedIn here and uh, I want to, I don't know, reach out to someone. So I'm going to reach out to my wife because, you know, she's not going to be annoyed at me if I prospect her. <laughs> <laughs> so here, that's Tolstoy. That's this thing. Uh, that I told you about. So here we go. Let me just. So let's assume my wife is uh, managing an SDR team or, you know, a head of sales or something like that. What I'm going to do is create my Tolstoy. So I click here, make sure that it works well. Then I go here and record the same. Hi Aram, thanks a lot for accepting my invitation to connect. Uh, dropping you this quick video because I'm curious to know what you're doing to prevent your team from turning off prospects with pushy cold outreach. If you're interested, I have a quick video I can share on how they can start joining conversations with prospects on LinkedIn. So if that sounds interesting, let me know and I'll send it over. Bye. So here, recorded that, my invitation to connect. Audio is good, video is good, it's great. I don't even watch it, I don't care. It's just very basic, very simple. Then I make sure that I have different choice. She can answer with video, audio, or text. I could even add like um, a, a meeting link directly, but you know, I don't even bother. I create the video here. So it's loading. And then rename the video. Actually, because that's how we call each other, Bay. Back. Okay, you can see she's at the receiving end of so many prospecting stuff. <laughs> Poor thing. And you can see here, you see, after a few seconds, your moving GIF is there. So what you see here is how you can shoot prospecting videos. Um, I don't care about my beard. I don't care about if I look tired or whatever, you know, it's just, it's something that often I do in the morning and it's just, I look super tired. So, you know, I'm not awake or whatever, but it works really well because it's authentic. So that's the thing is if you can make it better, like, you know, good energy, it's amazing, but you're not here to make like a perfect video or we're not on Instagram. You're not here to show the best part of your life. You're just here to use this video, create a connection and start a conversation. And the idea is that the more authentic it is, the better it will be. 
So if there's imperfection, if you're stumbling a bit on your word, if it's not perfect, it's okay. As long as people can understand and it's not like cringy, but really that's the idea. So if you can do live stories on Instagram, you can do video prospecting. And I love to actually consider it as just a voice note, but there's your face on it. You know, that's the only difference that people can see your face and it's just a voice note. So that's really something that's really important about video prospecting is to understand that it's just another channel, another media, and you don't need to go and become an artist or edit like crazy. You just need to record the video, send them and include that into your prospecting setup. Typically. Uh, I think, Tivo, one thing that's important, I think, where many people don't do it is because A, they may not know the tools, B, uh, get, a, get to know a new tool before I work my way into a new tool, shoot a video uh, that I need to retake 10 times, man, I'm much faster sending, you know, 20 emails, which is, I yeah. think, what keeps the perfection bias that we have, right, especially yeah. in Germany. Um, so if I understood you correctly, um, it doesn't matter, right? Really, if it's perfect or not, it's more about the fact that you do it and that you do something personalized that stands yeah. out rather than having the perfect communicated message. Exactly. It's, you know, it's, it's good if you have a great message, but the practice will make you perfect on that. And it's better to have like uh, 10 clunky videos than zero video, actually. So you really want to just start shipping them. And after like a few of them, you're just going to, it's going to sound super natural. You see how I recorded mine? I just don't, you don't even think that's something I say every morning, all the time. And it's pretty much the same script. I just changed the first name, but it sounds personalized because I took the time to record it. It's not like a trick with AI or whatever. I just say the, the text and that's really repetition that's going to help. And I told you, I had some crazy backgrounds. I was once with a friend. Uh, it was in Brittany and it looked like a horror dollhouse. You know, it was like just the paint, the wallpaper was so ugly. But I got like a lot of meetings because of that, you know, of the ugly white paper. We're like, what is that? So that's the thing is, uh, is the, the fact that the more authentic, the more weird or, you know, the more it shows your personality, the better it is. You're not here to do a movie. You're just here to communicate, basically. Mm -hmm. What's yeah. your conversion rate, Thibault? Or have you, I'm, I'm, I'm sure you've benchmarked yeah. regular, you know, cold outreach uh, without video, with video. Uh, what's your response rates that you, that you are getting? So video, um, I, it's more like something on the sequence, but where I include video, I get 38% reply rate on average. And that's something I've been, I've seen like for over a year and a half. So uh, 38%, yeah. Okay. And in your regular sequence, uh, I'm just firing questions at you, right? That, 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 yeah. that keep coming up. Where in your regular sequence does video fall? Is it the first outreach? Is it the, the third, the fourth? Is it the last, you know, like the... Uh, your um, breakup email is a video. Where do you use it? Where does it fall? So I do it right after the connection request. So when I connected with someone and they accepted, I'm going to use a video. If I'm already connected, that's going to be my first touch point. That's pretty much the only time I use it because uh, it's what's get the most uh, personalization and effort. So I want to maximize my chance to have an, an, an early reply instead of waiting for the last uh, touch points. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. The tool that you're using, we got a question from uh, Justus, I think it was. Um, it's probably not a tool that's for free, right? It's paid. So there's a freemium version, uh, but uh, where you're limited on the more you can do, but then you can pay. Uh, and uh, yeah, yeah, there's something like $10, $10 per month, I think, from something like that. Okay, that's, that's affordable, Justus. Yeah. 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 Cool. Good. Another question? Or should I go with the setup? I have one, but I, I can also put at the end if you want. Okay, let's do the setup and then we'll yeah. get the question. Cool. So prospecting video setup. Uh, setup is very important because that's where you're going to feel comfortable. So make sure you're in more or less silent place. Um, you know, where there's no like kids shouting or whatever, you know, that's important just to have a bit of silence when you're there. Uh, use your computer's camera and decent lighting. As again, as I told you, lighting, make sure that when there's a window that you are facing the window or the window is on your side, but not behind because it's going to do a, I don't know how you call that, but contre jour in French, we call that. So one main source of light. And if you can actually have a, a light that is on your side, that can really help. I personally have a thing like that, which is a light. You know, it's just like a, a Seba or whatever. And uh, yeah, it's just, you know, it's very basic. So that works really well. 
Um, then computer's microphone, largely enough. You know, if you have, uh, as I said, if you can do Zoom call where people can see and hear you, that's enough. And then Tolstoy, as I recommend, uh, where you can host videos on, uh, you know, on link, creating GIF and give different options. You can use stuff like Loom, uh, Vidyard, whatever you want, doesn't really matter. For me, I actually recommend Tolstoy first because I'm an advisor for the company. So every, you know, like I get some cash every time you, you pay. I mean, not specifically like that, but if we make a big exit, I'm going to be rich. So please go and do that. But also because I, I went there because I like the fact that you can do like different paths basically with videos where you can have different kind of format, but you're, you're free to choose whatever you want. They are all pretty much the same. Um, and so last point that is very important is how to get over your fear of video prospecting. So this one's very, it's actually the biggest blocker for most people is that they're just afraid of that. So it is uncomfortable video prospecting. The first few times you'll just be very strange to hear your voice, see your face in this different kind of angle and all this. A lot of people are afraid of being judged based on their acting skills and they're afraid of sending videos to strangers. So uh, that's really something we can see where people are just really not comfortable sending videos to strangers. And often people are obsessed over details where they just want to make sure that the video, the lighting is perfect, the voice is great, the makeup is great, you know, that they don't have like a, some acne or you're shining too much or whatever. So that's, that's the problem is we are salespeople, we're not actors. So you can't, you don't have a whole crew to make you look great. So the idea is that you should not worry too much about that. So what I think you can do when you're actually recording your video, sometimes it's very comfortable to see your face and moving and everything. So what you can do is open a new tab uh, where you won't see your face. So you'd be able to record the video, open a new tab then close it and close the video. You can record your screen where your face will actually not become the subject of focus, but it's gonna become, it's gonna go like at the bottom left or right and you'll be able to see less of it. And what you can do is to start sending videos to your colleagues. So uh, if you want to, you know, try and, and prospect with that, you can send that to your colleagues, but you can also send some uh, documentation where you document processes, document maybe successes or failure with video. So you get familiar to recording video with recording videos, and then you share that with your colleagues. So that's a really good way to get started in there. And yeah, that's basically like my kind of basic, uh, basic uh, uh, idea on video prospecting. So if you summarize everything, you have to make sure you shoot your core videos, and then you have to make sure you have your prospecting videos that are really teasing the interest of your prospects. Great. Thanks a lot for sharing, Thibault. Um, again, a lot of golden nuggets in there. Um, beautiful. First off, please do share, and I'll share with everyone in here. Um, on, on, on your last one, uh, send videos to your colleagues. I mean, to all of you that have gone through our training, you know that we use Loom excessively. Um, and which is similar to that. I don't know if there are call to actions that you can actually include. I like that about Tolstoy. Um, um, not that I know it especially, but really start using Loom, for example, or Tolstoy or a tool like that to send explanations to colleagues. You'll, you'll see instead of sending a 10 minute email, having a 20 second video where you say, hey, listen, this is what I meant. Here's where you find it much, much faster. And it helps you getting acquainted with the whole process. Um, before we um, wrap it up, okay, anyone with questions on anything in regards to what you heard or anything else that you want to ask Thibault in regards to his career, his development, whatever, feel free to shoot. Yes, I've got one. So, I mean, if we, if we are, uh, as we are in Germany, often like very, um, like careful with data. Have you ever experienced some customers or prospects who are not willing to click on the link because they are afraid of, I don't know, uh, some, what is Trojana or some, mm. I don't know, the Trojan horse viruses. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, uh, so it's hard to, it's hard to say because you don't know when they don't click. So, um, and why they don't click. What you see is, uh, I just got out of, um, podcast recording with Mattia Shepper. Maybe you know about her. She's the founder of SDR of Germany and she's selling to people in Germany. And she told me like all these uh, prejudice and ideas we have about Germans being more careful than the others or German being more, you should call me doctor or whatever. Uh, are not super true actually. What we see is that 
they're not more careful than French people or English or American. They're not more formal than any of these. They're just, you know, humans like, uh, like everyone. So that's the first thing. So what you see is more in sectors like, you know, like banking or sectors that are really data sensitive, your links may be blocked basically. So that can be an issue. But that's why I love using LinkedIn because on LinkedIn, it's hard to link to block everything. Um, but sometimes some specific industries will be super hard to penetrate with video because they are using Internet Explorer, whatever. And, uh, you know, nothing works on that. So did, did not super common, but that can happen based on the industry. And, and do you do like any kind of hacks to make sure that it seems to be like very high quality or it's just really this short message to drop, like you drop out and say, check us out. Um, see the video so basically uh, what you can do is when you do just dropping a link on LinkedIn that's in, that's enough that's pretty much actually the only way you can do it what you can do there's a way where you can take the video take a gif and basically the link will be inserted behind the gif so you put it into the email and it looks pretty good I can show you an example if we go with Tolstoy you know I'll go here Email, yeah, cool. Copy code and then bring it into email. Uh, and you see it looks like that. So that's a good way to make it happen. Looks pretty good and works pretty well in email too. Nice, thanks a lot. Oh, and by the way, my wife replied. <laughs> so I make those the deal. I'm Which... interested. Nice. Um, I'm sure she <laughs> wanted you to have life. that one life. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Uh, anyone else? Uh, like really, nothing is off limits, right? As you know. So whatever that interests you, or yeah, as long as we're talking know. about video and not uh, my my wife, but uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um. Just a quick one. Um. You might have said it already, but how many do you get done, like efficiency wise in the morning? So my technique in the morning, so I prospect every morning from pretty much 8.30 to 9 or 8 to 8.30. Um, in the 30 minute window, I find, I do my follow-ups and I find five new prospects. See, typically out of these five new, I'm going to be connected with three. So you could think of uh, three per day, three to four per day. Mm -hmm. Super, thank you. Great. Anything else that you think that that interests you, that you've been wondering? No. If not, um, Thibaut, any any last advice that you have that you want to share, um, on video prospecting first first steps to get started or anything that you do want to um, say as last words. Yeah, I think you should sign up to a newsletter I have, which is called the Tactical Selling Newsletter, where every Thursday I share one tactical tip about video, I mean, about prospecting in general. So that's where you're going to get a lot more tips. But with video, if we come back to video, just go and try and start it. You know, like I'm going to share again the slides uh, as, as we discussed. Go again with that. And if you want to just shoot me a prospecting video on LinkedIn, so I give you some feedback, just go ahead. I'll be happy Beautiful. to answer. But that's the thing, just get started. And worst case, people will ignore you. And guess what? In prospecting, most people ignore us, but you know, it's just about doing the work and some people will reply and some people will book meetings. So, yeah. Perfect. Great. So Thibaut, again, thanks a lot for, for sharing your insights and the resources. Um, I will make sure to share them with all of you. Mm -hmm. um, thanks also for, for all of you for joining. I hope that each of you at least has one little um, nugget of knowledge or thing that you want to try that you take out of the meeting um, have a lovely rest of the evening lovely rest of your week and I hopefully see all of you very soon thanks yeah. a lot thanks for having me thanks everyone ciao thanks. Thanks. thank bye you bye. thank bye. you bye, bye.